Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Heartwell Death Stream, the live stream series where we're continuing to develop this adorable little action RPG with platform mechanics and brand chain narrative. And if you find these death streams interesting or helpful, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click that bell button to stay notified. Now, what we previously left off, the big, big, big change is that the UI is now all where it needs to be. So as you can see, it's fully functional. We can hover our mouse over the various areas to get the, the manifest help text working. It's good to see that this uh, UI is fully functional here, so that was definitely the biggest thing that needed to change for the full screen rework. rework. But there are still a couple of miscellaneous things we need to take care of uh, with the uh, before the full screen rework can be fully implemented. Hello, Quinn. Thank you for dropping by. How, how much? Don't, how, how's it going? <laughs> uh, what I was trying to review is that there was there's um, even though we did the thing that would take the longest amount of time for the full screen rework, there's still some miscellaneous things. So off the top of my head, the things that come to mind are the uh, the dialogue. So where the dialogue appears. So I think the I don't remember if I changed where the lore bits appear quite yet. I don't think I did. Let me check my notes here. Um, okay, so I, I, okay, I think we're actually good there. But one area I know we need to work on is the, uh, the announcement test UI. You might be saying, it's not, what's the announcement test? Well, the announcement test is a bunch of different things. So if at any point, for example, you've uh, been destroyed in Hartwell, like if you've ever been defeated, for example, you see this uh, pop up, the, um, the, the, the big RIP sign. And the RIP sign was designed for the current, for the previous window size. Well, now we obviously have to change that since it's going to be a smaller window. And so anywhere where there's any sort of announcement text, uh, like, you know, the text that is barred off well or rip, we need to adjust that a bit. And it's not as simple as just moving the text because the text actually was fairly large to begin with and would not necessarily line up well. So today, uh, for the first time in a very long time, we're actually going to probably be spending more of our time in graphics scale than we will be in Fusion, uh, just because this is where I do most of my graphical editing. So first things first, uh, let's clear some space. Essentially, chat this um, this outline here, this rectangular outline. The large one represents where uh, the current window size of 800 by 450, and the smaller size here is uh, what the the new window size will be. Mind you, it needs to be smaller so that I can enlarge in it in order to fill up more of the screen. Yes, yeah, so we multiply it by a scalar of two. But in order to do that, we're first going to need to adjust some text. So let's um, let's move some things around here. Okay. Oh, that's another thing that I'll need to change. So. The boss health bar, obviously, uh, its current length is, is, is too long for what the new, um, for what the new, um, window size is going to be, so that will take some adjustments as well. Okay. Well, okay, that's that. Okay, let's move. No, we don't really need that here. Why should we clear that out? All right. Let's 
this. If it looks like chaos chat, that's because for now it kind of is a bit of chaos. But not to worry, we will make this work. Hello, Copper Nelson. Thanks for dropping by. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Dev Strand, where now we're adding the UI to support the full screen re rework. All right, let's move some things. So right now, I'm just trying to clear space so it's more easy to see what we're working on. Okay, so for the purposes of what I need this UI for, we actually don't need any of this. Just some good news. What's that? Oh, your your work shift's changed. That's cool. What's your new work shift look like, Copper Nicholson? All right, we have some space to work with now. That's what the you prevailed tats would look like. This uh, we'll start by making a list. So you say announcement tats too. I'll say following announce. So right now I'm just making a list of the different um what's it called? Basically, instead of having Monday and Tuesday off, you now starting and Sunday off. Cool. Well, that's good to hear. All right. 
Uh, barred off well, that'll need to change. Okay. Are there just any other announcement that's that pops up? Let's take a look. Oh, the, the altar. Yeah, we're right that. Announcement Tets 2 is, um... I think that's in the depths I want to Oh, that's the, that's the you prevailed. Okay. Is there anything else in you prevailed? We've identified the things that need to be changed. Let's start with the uh, You Prevail, since that actually requires an animation change. So... First things first, let's find this. This being the banner that comes with it. Let's say it's that. No. It's part of the title effects. Hmm. Curious. Rentals asked, was my review of MLP G4? I'm assuming G4 means Season 4. It seems alright. Entertaining? Sure. Topical? Sure. It's about all I really got to say. Think here, what's like the where's the midpoint here? That's 451, say 13. It's gonna be 
Sets 82. That would be said sturdy to that would be the midpoint. Okay. It would be worthwhile to draw a line there just for our own reference. Well, then sure, we're maintain some semblance of our sanity. Let's try to make sure it's about even. Since that'll be the most important part. Let's see here. What are my biggest pros or cons of the show? Um, I think the the biggest pro that the ship has, the biggest pro that the show has going for it is that it's able to essentially convey very common um, challenges that people will face in social situations in a way that's easily digestible. I think that might be why so many people of all ages are drawn to the show, because it's there's a lot of people who just don't get that social interaction to learn the lessons that they show on the show. Like, very specific situations, I think back to, I think it was like Discord getting jealous over not being invited to go to a certain event with Fluttershy. And how it's, you know, you don't have to, a situation like that doesn't mean like their friendship's over or anything, it just means that they want to do something else on that particular day. So I think that's where the show really shines. I think the... I think the animation style works well for what the show is going for. It's very colorful, uh, definitely. He gives a, a lot of flex because it's uh, of its more simplistic uh, nature. Actually, uh, they actually use that to do some more expressive animations with the characters. I think mean, that's a very good thing. Um, let's see. In terms of 
I think the voice acting's generally pretty good. Um, I like that they hey, make a bunch of references to the other media. So those are the things that definitely come to mind. Um, in terms of negatives, at least from what I've seen so far, the the fight scenes that are there generally aren't that. I guess the 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 fight scenes I've seen definitely aren't as engaging as I would like them to be. Like I feel like with how expressive they're able to be with the characters in more social situations, like almost to a cartoonish degree, especially with characters like Pinkie Pie. It makes the it makes the fight scene seems by comparison much more lackadaisical, much more like not as much effort was put into them. And don't get me wrong, I understand that it's not that's not the main focus of the show. I just feel like if they're you know clearly capable in the animation department, they could go just a little bit harder with uh, some of the battle scenes that they do have. Um, also, I think a lot of uh, not all the villains, but um, a lot of the villain subplots, there there comes a moment where uh, there's room for something really engaging and it just gets oversimplified. The, I'm trying to think of a good example of this. Oh, I'm having trouble thinking of a good example off the top of my head, but in general, it just... I feel like a lot of villains aren't nearly as intimidating as they could be given the subject's material that they're covering. Now, that's not always the case. I think, um... I think from what the villains that I've seen, the, um... Whatever the character is that's like a shapeshifter. Uh, I think, I think she had, um... Uh, she had a pretty good development as a villain in terms of conveying the villain, uh, the evil nature of what they were trying to accomplish. But... Yeah, so so I think in that case, they can, they, they made it uh, like, like a, a seemingly a big threat. But then there are situations where like with the um what, what's the name of the character the character who was like wanted ever like all ponies to be equal that one like there are moments there where it's like okay this is genuinely disturbing like this is really fitting for a villain and then there's other moments where it's like wait couldn't the heroes just evil easily resolve this by i don't know running away getting the cavalry so to speak that kind of thing it, it, it gets to a situation where it's like there's moments where it's hard for me to suspend my disbelief because the villains are genuinely doing something stupid and the heroes aren't recognizing that the, the villains are really doing something stupid that they could capitalize on. So like on the one hand you have moments where it's like they're manipulating time and that and that was quite convincing because they show that no matter how many times the main character Twilight Sparkle fought back against them, they could not win simply because they had control over time. And I think the way that they beat the villain there was actually very clever, that they had to convince the villain to essentially give up. Because if they didn't, they would just be caught in an endless loop. Like, like that was really clever. But then you have, again, circling back to what I was saying before, you have situations where it's like, okay, so you've just locked them in a house. And you're going to let them out to see things. Yes, there are other members that can fly and such, but you're dealing with people who are quite capable and have been in some pretty hairy situations. I think at least one of them could probably run away and, and call for help. Or even, and in the case of uh, Fluttershy, just, you know, faking it till she makes it, so to speak. Like, you just fake it long enough to get out of there, then you run and go get help, that sort of thing. Like, I feel like that would have posed much less risk than the plan that they ultimately went with. Um, yeah, so those are just a couple of examples. But it's, it's a situation that that's 
I think more just a general writing qualm. It's not unique to MLP. Like, I've, I've seen plenty of instances in, in various shows where it's like something really dumb happens. And it, 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 that's to, it dumb to the point where it's like makes it makes the characters themselves look dumb. Yes, they're like, why can't you realize this? Like in my like in my opinion, if a um, where was I going with this? I I've lost my train of thought. Anyway, uh, we are in the midst of UI reworks. Which frame is that background? That. Well, so. All right, uh, I agree with you on the second point part. To the first part, Mark Copter Nicholson saying, uh, the village was in a remote location, so Ryan did help with taking too long. Uh, counterpoint, the village has been there for a very long time. They are not going to move it, since that's kind of a whole part of the Equalist uh, modus operandi. So saying that it would take too long for them to get help, it doesn't really make any sense. It's where are they going to go? Like, they're not going anywhere. Like, it'd be one thing if they were, like, had, a, you know, a remote base set up, but they don't. It's, they're in one stat location, so however long it takes, the kind of is beside the point. I mean, a, a big part of that is that... You know how I know that they wouldn't run off because of that vault where they were st storing all the cutie marks. Like, there's no way in heck that in the amount of time it would have taken any one of the ponies to go back to Ponyville and get help, that that one other pony would be able to somehow move all of the cutie marks in that massive vault to somewhere else and then convince the village to basically uproot themselves and move up others without giving the opportunity for the other ponies to escape as well. Yeah, but that's my thing. And, you know, this might be a bit of a side comment, but uh, but honestly, like the one, I guess the one movie we saw where the characters were portrayed in more humanoid form as opposed to talking ponies, I honestly thought that was more engaging personally. I think that just comes down to personal preference, just because I felt like when you're portraying the characters as in an actual humanoid form, it made all of the actual social messages they're trying to convey, I think, hit a lot harder. Because it's yes, as 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 humans, we we are more easily able to relate to things that are more familiar to us. And no matter how much, you know, how realistically you write the dialogue, at the, at the end of the day, two talking ponies is not going to be <laughs> as relatable as two talking people. Uh, yes, I, th I think that's what I was told. I know, that's more of a personal preference, but something I noticed. I agree with that point, Copper Nicholson. That you know, as soon as Celestia learns about that their their best students were in trouble, you know they, they they would send in the cavalry, and there's no way that that town would be able to match up against the the might of Celestia, especially given that they basically gave up most of their magical powers. All right, so we have you prevailed. Let's start by doing the test all in in order, and then we'll um and and then we will focus on that. 
Uh, I'll be right back, chat. Alrighty, welcome back, chat. Sorry about that. Just needed to check something real quick. Alright, so let's grab that. Yeah, the irony is the 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 size of the rift tests probably could set could stay just as it's only three letters. More so, it would just need to be moved. Let's see what it will look like at a smaller size, though. <laughs> you start a. Uh, Kyle Rinkelson says, to be honest, after watching the movie, you start with fantasies about Class 7 doing the cafeteria songs from the movie. So what I hear you saying, Copper Nicholson, is that you miss Trails is that you miss Tri you miss Trails of Cold Steel. Hey, I, I I'm with you there. Like I I'm excited for the day when we finally play Trails of Cold Steel 3 in a challenge run. Like I wanna see where that story goes. But <laughs> this this is the key the, the key uh thing here. Before we play Trails of Cold Steel 3, I want to make sure I have all the context about uh, Trails in the Sky, the, the Trails in the Sky trilogy, and the Trails from Zero duology. Because, uh, tra you know, Trails is on a completely different dimension in terms of world building, in terms of interconnectivity, as far as video game writing is concerned. And because of that, I think they'll it really enrich this experience if, it, if it, we at least have the context behind those games. And also, you may have seen my post on Discord that there is a um, there's a, a remake of uh, Tr Trails in the Sky coming out late next year. Apparently, I don't know if it's going to be for PC, but given that, and there will as a result probably be heightened interest in Trails in the Sky. I intend to actually uh, challenge run the OG Trails in the Sky uh, as the next uh, Trails challenge run. Very much looking forward to that. Because I remember in Trails from Zero, just Estelle and Joshua carried us through that final dungeon, and they were really interesting characters, and I just want to see what their, their story is all about. And the idea that Estelle Bright is somehow a protagonist to... Just, this just sounds amazing to me. <laughs> from, from what I saw in Trails from Zero, I'm like, is this seriously the protagonist? Because if so, I'm completely on board. <laughs> it's like, I've never seen a protagonist quite like this. <laughs> All right. So, looking at the relative size, I think we'll keep the, the rip as like a... It's like this large size test in the center, just to be... to really convey the, the defeat. So let's try to even that on up. Yeah, I can also definitely see uh, Class 7 singing um, that song, considering that um, considering that Class 7 already did a musical performance in uh, canonically in the game, so that would definitely uh, pop up. Okay. 
That's we need the altar lead. So altar lead will probably just be the same text size, just would say altar lead. Yep, just like that. Let's see if we can center that, center that up a bit. Finally. Barred off well. So. Barred off well is. Let's see here. I have to think about this not from the perspective uh what well, I need to figure out what the the best uh test size is going to be here because the thing is some of the names of some of the locations later in the game can be a wander than the the words barred off well so it's not as simple as just typing barred off well and calling it a day because they even at this size it would well, at this size it would barely fit, but I'm pretty sure there's some areas that would be um, that would need an even longer amount of text. I can cross that bridge when we get there. Now, the tricky thing about Bardoff Well is just the fact that um. I have the unique text that needs uh, added there. Well, first things first. Start that with the outline. Ah, uh, chat, just, this is our jam. Our jam has arrived. I hear this music the chat it always makes me feel so nostalgic because I think of where we've where we've been every time that I've heard this song. Like I, I remember hearing the song when we were first working on building like outline the very uh outlines of the rooms. Not even just the the overall map, just the individual rooms. Before there was any artwork or anything. I just designed the areas that eventually became barred off well. And it makes me excited to that you see like, you know, how far will we be at this time next year, you know? To, because if last year was all about really just trying to get the demo out the door, this year's been, this year has very much been about refinement. And definitely looking forward to seeing uh, how far, how much progress I can make uh, towards the full release of the game when I've, you know, really, really hammered it her down the uh, the foundation for the game. 
you have done so, so far. Thanks, Quinn. I really appreciate it. I know we still have a ways to go, but yeah, it's, I mean, we've been doing this for three years, and we've already come quite far. I'm definitely excited to see where it all goes. Uh, Copper Nicholson redeemed a message. Read a message as Toa. Mm -mm. Reen, I wrote a song to help with my campaign to become a prom queen. It goes like this. Hey, ev hey, everybody. We're here to shout that the magic of friendships was all about. Now, we thought that we were different as the night is from day until Taylor Herschel helped us see the another way. So get up, get down. If you're going to come around, we can work together, helping Toa win their crown. So get up, get down, because it's going to make the sound. If we work together, helping Toa wish Herschel win the crown. And the thing is, like, I could definitely see, like... I could definitely see Class 7 going all out like that for Toa. Especially towards the end of Trail of Cold Steel 1. Because like, if you think about it, Toa's the whole... Uh, to Toa's played a massive role in actually get getting Reen their uh, idea for... Uh, their concert in the first place. Very much uh, Reen following in Toa's footsteps there. All right. Let's see here. Now it goes, yeah, something like that. weird here. Ah, I see.
Oh, it's this. Yeah, it's the, the W. I think. <laughs> All right, and with that, we have our our test. Now we just need to bring that on into uh, Fusion two point five for the actual animations. So. I think we'll pick up with that after a short break. So don't go over, guys. I will be right back.
All right, yeah, welcome back, everyone. Um, France. Anyway. Hmm. Let's see here. Now we have to copy things over. As I, and for these, um, depending on what they are, it's not going to be as simple as a one-to-one -one copy. Like, for some it'll be easier, like the, the ultra lit animation, but... Let's see, is that here? Yeah. Actually, no, it's it's not quite that easy. Okay. So first things first. We need to establish a midpoint. Let's, uh... Let's see here. I'm not sure what gave that impression, Copper Nicholson. Sometimes when I'm watching a, a, a movie or a show, sometimes I won't say much of anything because I'm because I'm actually quite engaged by it. Other times I'm, I might be saying not much of anything because I'm, I'm bored by it, but if it's something that I find really engaging, sometimes I just like to sit back, look, watch it happen, and then really think about it. But I remember when watching that movie, especially when they start saying, I don't know what the name of the song is, but like the song of the cafeteria, it just kind of made me think about my my own experiences in high school and having just kind of like that joy of being together or with friends working towards some collective project. So in my case, that would have been the many, many plays and, and musicals I took part in, in in high school. And just, again, the joy of being young and working towards uh, some collective creative endeavor like that. things first. So in theory. Do that. Aha! Perfectly placed. As all things. Should be. Unfortunately, I'd rather I'm on the wrong frame. Uh, Where is that? Let's see, 180 is around there. Uh, it's, no, it should be about right. Okay, now we'll draw out the test. So, bit of a pro tip here, chat. If you're ever having to copy things over and you need something to orient to, it's always good to orient by a corner if you can. Like this, since that will prevent you from having to make micro adjustments later. That's why I was starting from up here and dragging and dropping over here. Now, I can't quite do that for the test here because that would require overlapping a bit. Actually, I guess I could if I just move it temporarily. Do 
something like that. So now it's all nice and center. All right, and there we go. Altar lit, nice and center, all lined up. Need this for four frames. Canonically, Copper Nicholson, because I wasn't quite aware of of what their ages are supposed to be. So we got that. The altar lit's actually done. Well, actually, it's just done on one frame. That means the next thing. Yeah, so rip. Well, good news is we can use this as a baseline here. Because we can just uh, fit that. Hi. That's not what I want to do. Grab that. Hmm. <laughs> hey, Copper Nicholson. Have you seen an anime called Free Red? Just out of curiosity. Is that the anime about the white-haired elf mage? Yes, it is. Well, let me ask you this. The anime about the white-haired elf mage that is essentially uh, raising a purple-haired apprentice?
As if you heard it before, I'd be curious uh, to hear how far have you gotten in it. All right, all the way up through the end of season one. That's all. Have Have you finished all of season one yet? Because I could. Because uh, I I definitely really really enjoyed it. I think the pacing's quite good. The character writing's very good. The animation's spectacular. And just the feeling of an adventure is spot on. But I can understand. Hey, oh, you watched it through. Like I, I can definitely understand why it's um it's it's topped uh Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood on the uh, my anime list. Hmm. Let's see here. Oh, that's that's you prevailed. Why did, I, why did I go for? Oh. I do need this, just not in this particular spot. Hmm. So, have you seen the full uh, first season of of Fruit and Copper Rifle Sin? Because if it is, if that is the case, I'd be curious to hear about what you find dull about her character. Because Free Run is someone who is very smart and capable, but they essentially they essentially wasted their time with their with the with their people who are their dearest friends to the point where one of them passes away and they only then realize how is their mistake but at that point then they have to take on and uh decide to take on a new challenge of then it senses their own sort of atonement for that and that is of course raising fern and all the challenges that comes with that and from that point on it becomes a question and a growth in terms of motherhood so in many ways i think free run is an anime about motherhood and the challenges that come with that, as well as the joys that come with that. And all the while, as Free Run is helping Fern uh, grow on her journey, Free Run's also seeing, reflecting on her past and having to uh, see things in a different way that she never did before. So. In my eyes, I don't think that's necessarily dull. Now, if you're not nearly as fan of of, a, of the more slice of life style uh, parts of the adventure, you know that's a perfectly fair point. It's not, definitely not for everyone. Yeah, uh, if 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 you think they're not the if you think they're uh, 
situation is not like mother daughter i would encourage you to rewatch the anime because it sounds to me kind of like copper nicholson perhaps you weren't paying particularly close attention and that's only one aspect of free rent's character as well the other aspect has to do with essentially the um free rent definitely has her own very very strong biases uh especially against demons now she has a a very good you know she has some good reasons for why she thinks the way she does but at the same time if you look as an outside observer you can definitely see how heavy of an impact her master and her master's master had on shaping her view of the world and it definitely sets up some interesting uh moral quandaries that might become more apparent in future seasons Anyway. I would encourage you to rewatch the anime than Copper Nicholson. While Free Run tends to be on the quieter side a lot of the time, there's also there's also plenty of instances where she shows emotion. You know, crying at the sight of Himmel's of, of Himmel's grave. Uh, the the joy she feels, feels sharing experiences with Fern. The uh, even the, um, well, even just the pure anger she feels in the, in, in the face of demons. Let's see here. I would encourage you to rewatch the anime if you're unaware of that Copper Nicholson. I thought it was quite clear.
see here. Doop, doop, doop. Oh, also, Copper Nicholson, did you see the trailer for the Sonic 3 movie? As there are definitely some interesting choices in terms of the story direction they seem to be taking for that movie. Given what I know of Sonic Adventure 2. Oh yeah, Keanu Reeves, like, he sounds perfect for Shadow. Like, when I actually saw, like, you know, the character talking, I'm like, okay, yeah, I understand why they picked Keanu Reeves for Shadow. But also, the fact that uh, Gerald Robotnik is actually, like, alive, that's very interesting, because that was not the case in Sonic Adventure 2. I'll be very curious to see how that impacts the story with Gerald Robotnik being an actual, like, person that's alive in the story as opposed to being someone who's doing everything posthumously. I'm not so sure about Metal Sod. If, if anything, Copper Nicholson, I feel like Metal Sod would probably be the villain for like the fourth or fifth movie. And the reason I say that is one, Metal Sonic is more than smart enough to be a villain on his own, even without Robotnik. Sonic Heroes proved that much. Like, it, it, like throughout Sonic Heroes, like, Robotnik basically did nothing. He was just kind of stuck. And Metal did everything. So Metal Sonic could be a villain that could carry an entire movie, even without Robotnik being on, on, on screen. Uh, second is that, canonically speaking, Metal Sonic's first appearance was in the same game that Amy Rose appears in, so I would think that the movie that features Amy the heaviest would also have metal in it in order to reference Sonic CD. Um, finally, there is plenty of... there's plenty more to delve into that they could do in Sonic Adventure... in the, with, with uh, lore from Sonic Adventure 2 and from Shadow the Hedgehog if they need some kind of outside threat for Sonic and Shadow to bond over. If I had to make a guess, um, I'd probably say they would either go a similar route with how Sonic Adventure 2 had them having to fight the final hazard, slash the bio-lizard, since that would kind of line up with Gerald Robotnik's experiments. And I think if they're going to put such a heavy emphasis on Gerald Robotnik, that would probably be the most likely outcome. But if they're not going to do the bio-lizard, Heard of the space call in the arc, the next likeliest thing would be something to do with um, whatever the name of the antagonist was from uh, Shadow of the Hedgehog. Yeah, but my guess is that's at, like at the my guess would be like at the very end of Sonic the Hedgehog th three. The after credit scene is going to be either Amy Rose appearing for the first time or something related to Metal Sonic. Those would be my guesses. Uh, my my hope for would since we're on the topic of Amy Rose, my hope is that for what whichever movie Amy appears in, I would hope that Cream the Rabbit appears alongside her, just because as Amy and Cream are like best friends, it'd be really cool to see them both on the big, on the big screen trying to trying to fight evil. I have not. What are you guys uh, referring to, Copper Nicholson? Okay, so I think this can stay since it's just a, a dark screen. Let's uh, resize everything. I 
16 times I can do that. Is that centered? Well, for the Saw 3 movie, I, I wonder if they'll make a reference to Snap Cube's uh, fan dub. I doubt it, but it'd be really funny if they did. <laughs> Ah, all right, that's cool. I hope you guys enjoy the movie. This is where it gets tricky. We'll be there momentarily. Hmm. So the reason it gets tricky here, chat, is this is where things expand and it's get darker. Okay, so one, two. So it's an eight frame animation. That roughly centered. Yeah, okay, that's roughly centered.
Alrighty. Oh, I will say this, chat. So, since we're doing a Heartwell Dev stream uh, right now, I've, I've been having a lot of fun uh, this uh, the past couple of weeks, especially uh, writing some lore for the main antagonist of the of the game. Like, I really feel like I'm starting to fill in a, in some gaps in, in the lore, and that's got me very excited for well, the full game. <laughs> it's um, I remember when I made uh. Whenever I write stories of any kind, I, I really do. Uh, enjoy creating, like, writing com uh, villains that I find at least somewhat compelling. Like, trying to understand where they come from, how they got became what they are, and sort of how they they are a foil for the uh, for the hero. Well, oh, all the more reason and to redouble our efforts for what we're currently doing here, chat, because once we get through with all this foundational work, then we can move on to stuff that's more directly related to uh, gameplay that occurs later in the game. Like new levels, new bosses, the affinity system, the actual other the other major characters in the game, like all, all stuff I'm really, really excited to hopefully show you guys uh, uh, in the near future. <laughs> Darcy Well Art, the reverse Dorothy. What is this? <laughs> what the heck is a Darcy Well Art? No, no, they are not. <laughs> it's already, I think, fairly well established what the main antagonist of Hartwell is, and if you're not sure, just go, just go download the demo and watch the opening cutscene. It will be very apparent, <laughs> like who the main antagonist is supposed to be. <laughs> I mean, Copper Nicholson, you've seen the opening top, uh, you've seen the opening pro, you know, prologue, haven't you? Where it's almost like a storybook, and it's telling you, you this, it's telling you the circumstances around how to Elysium. I very much structure that uh, opening prior to the main menu to be very similar to like the opening to Shining Force, where it really tries to hammer, hammer in what, uh, who, you know, who the main antagonist is. Just as I remember, like playing Shining Force, watch watching the opening cutscene so many times, getting excited to eventually he face this dark dragon at the at the end of Shining Force. So definitely want to have that same sort of feel of uh, setting the stage, so to speak, for the main antagonist of Hartwell by, by giving that kind of storybook opening.
see here. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that comprehensible sim. Weren't you able to play it before? As if not, what you could probably do, Copper Nicholson, is you probably looked up, like, you could probably looked up Gregor's playthrough, uh, initial playthrough of Part 1. Pretty sure he goes over the opening cutscene. Well, you can always try, you can always try uh, re-downloading it or uploading to the latest patch. Well, the latest patch would have been still from, like, last December, I think, but... It could also be something with your antivirus, Copper Nicholson. I've, I've had situations where Hartwell just won't open because of, because of the antivirus. But yeah, you have options to, to, to watch the opening if, if you're unable to access it for whatever reason. Okay, we're getting there, chat. On to frame six. For those who are wondering what I'm doing, I'm updating the animation and for when the RIP test uh, appears after the player is defeated. Did I like what? Oh, yeah, they, they seemed fine. 
Though I don't think we really got to see too much of them. Were you able to find a, a playthrough to watch Dr. Nicholson? Fair enough, no worries, Dr. Nicholson. There we go.
right now, chat, I'm just resizing the, the window size here. All right, we're at the bar off all transition. Right into progress. So the player will always be kind of center of screen around there. The mouth bar will probably be roughly equidistant with the top and bottom of the screen. I believe the opening says that the uh, that the witch forged seven arch stones against which none could stand. I, th I believe that's what the the opening says. Roughly equidistant. say this Trapper Nicholson I have not watched Avengers Endgame I only know of Avengers Endgame and the fact that the Infinity Gauntlet exists so the art stones have nothing to do with that Leave. 
That'll cover that. What happened? Or copy that. Go to the lower level. Oh, uh, what makes the the witch seem pretty cool to you, Copper Nicholson? What about them sits out to you? Just just out of curiosity. Chat. I'm copying over the uh, new animations here. Remember what the, the end of the opening says, Copper Nicholson. After all we've suffered and all we've lost, will you seek paradise and at what cost? Well, I'm, I'm glad you at least liked the, the premise of the witch as an antagonist.
We're in the shop. Slowly but surely. We will make our, our way through this, um, these animations. Let's see here. Or more.
Great more. Uh, yeah, that needs to be uh, recentered. Okay.
Okay. Nice. All right. Well, chat, we actually got one of the um, announcement text UIs all fetched. That, of course, being announcement text UI 1. Now, we'll still have to fit this one. I think that's best left for another time. So. Uh, let's see here. So before I forget, chat, uh, there is going to be, I'm going to be away on travel during the week of the 22nd. So that'll, uh, there won't be any stream on the 22nd. Now there is a stream next week. So that being done. Uh, sorry, the week of the, there will be a, str a stream uh, next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after that, so I think that's September 18th, I'll be away on travel. I'm unable to stream at that point. But then after that travel week, uh, I think that would be September 25th <laughs> would be when the, the streams return. So just wanted to give you all the heads up about that. But anyway, I think this will be a good spot to wrap up for tonight. If you're watching on Twitch, feel free to stick around for a raid. But if you're watching on YouTube and you like what you saw, please consider subscribing on YouTube. It's really strong on YouTube. The only change your mind later is great way to show support. If you're watching on YouTube, have an amazing night.